Hey, I'm Billy. I'm Francis. And together? We're the Fuji guys. We're here in Ottawa, Ontario, the capital of Canada, and we have a great show for you today. Yeah, we're going to try out uh, different telephoto lenses to shoot wildlife here uh, with your Fujifilm camera. So keep on watching. So Francis, today we have one of Fuji's mirrorless camera, the X-T10. Yep. Of course, it could be any Fuji mirrorless camera that you just picked up. Most likely it came with a kit lens. Yep. This one particular comes with a 16 to 50 millimeter lens. Yes. Uh, equivalent to 35, it's uh, about a 75 millimeter equivalency reach. So, yep. you know, ideally it's a good all around lens, but it's not really great for shooting wildlife, especially if you really want to get close to the action when the action is way out there somewhere. So what I have here is one lens that we're going to test out. It's a uh, 50 to 30, which is a uh, affordable option for a uh, telephoto lens. Yeah, it's an XT lens, similar to yeah. this uh, 16 to 50, so uh, it, it doesn't have the aperture, aperture ring. ring. You have to control it on, your, on the back of your camera. But uh, we're going to test out and see the quality of it. Yeah, it has a long reach, right? It has about yeah. uh, 230 millimeters. Yes. So obviously you're extending that. And if we do the, uh, the crop factor magnification, that's yep. 1.5 times times 230. Yeah. That gives us a pretty good reach beyond yeah. what this camera offers. The 1650. Right? So let's just go shoot it and we'll, we'll share give our you thoughts. Our, yeah, we'll give our opinions on, on the lenses and how we feel about it. And, you know, probably would do the job great and it would be a good update uh, for this particular camera when shooting something like this. Yes. Let's do it. So, Francis, uh, just for the sake of it, I would use the uh, kit lens that comes with this camera. Yeah. So it goes to 50 millimeters. You have the new uh, telephoto lens option. It's 50 to 230. That's yep. an, another XD lens. I'm going to shoot at 50 mil. 50 mil. You shoot at 50 mil as well. Yep. See uh, uh, what that looks like. Yeah, so sure. Take the picture of that last duck at the end. Okay. Yeah. And then of course I'm fully maxed in terms of zoom, so you can zoom all the way to 230 and just to, see the just to see the difference uh, in how close you can get with the extra reach. Uh, again, you do the uh, 1.5 magnification factor to yep. get the 35 equivalents uh, yep. in terms of focal length. That's another great thing about an APS-C sensor is that, you, you know, for, reach. for wildlife, you actually get the extra reach, which you kind of want, right? Yeah. So that's kind of nice to see. Definitely. So now, Billy, we both have the, uh, the same lens, the 50 to 30. Yeah, you have the hood on, I don't, but, uh, you know. It depends. doesn't really matter today. Yeah. It's not a lot of sun, not but sun. it's there, so, you know. I like shooting without the hood. I like some, getting sometimes the, the flare. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But it, it makes uh, the lens a little bit smaller, but uh, we, we do have the exact same lenses, yeah. as you can see, with the hood. And the hood itself reverses onto the uh, lens so that uh, Stor for storage wise it's very portable. So let's just take some shots with it. Yeah. Um, we can pretty much, I'm going to shoot just full 230 uh, millimeters in terms of. Uh, yeah, the that's lens. what we want. We have uh, a great spot here where a lot of ducks uh, are here as well as some geese. They're just flying by. Um, I've just really set my camera to auto ISO today. I'm really shooting aperture priority and letting the camera do most of its work. And if I wanted to change the uh, exposure in any way, uh, I'm always you know, just adjusting the exposure compensation dials to, uh, to brighten yep. and darken the shots. I'm also on uh, aperture priority, but uh, I set my ISO to 800, just a preference. But I could put it on auto, it would work. Yep. Really, uh, really beautiful day, a, a far day here in Ottawa, Ontario again. A little bit uh, cold. A lot of parks here, and uh, it's great for shooting wildlife if you're, if you're into stuff like that. Uh, again, great, great trails to, to look about. Beautiful this is a great place. little lens, definitely lightweight, uh, yes. which, which is nice. Yep. Um, getting these shots here of, uh, of all the ducks are kind of just ducking Duck their diving. heads uh, in the water there. Kind of cool. And now, from what I see, the image quality looks nice. I mean, we'll have to look in closer, but the colors are good. Sharpness seems to be good. Yeah, and you know, today, because it's a cloudy day, uh, I'm actually shooting uh, with a Valvia setting for film simulation. It just punches up the colors a little bit more. Uh, you know, I shoot JPEGs a lot, and, and I don't like having to sit in front of a computer to play with raw files and, and, and get that little bit more. I'm not, I'm not needing to do that here. And the film simulations are really just a great option in Fuji cameras. Yeah, and JPEGs are amazing. With the extension of this zoom lens, I can just get so much more of a reach. But also, you know, it's about compression, right? I can kind of uh, get some of the further shots that, you know, 
have a give, gives you a little different feel to the to the picture. So you can still shoot some landscape shots with it at 50 millimeters, which is uh, 30, 35 millimeters and 35 uh, millimeter tone equivalencies. Uh, it's it's semi wide. I mean, it's not that wide, sorry, but uh, you know, I can get still some landscape shots. Oh, there's some birds coming out here. Let's see if we can oh. capture that. Now this lens has some great image stabilization on it. Um, you know, I would say two, two to uh, two and a half stops uh, potentially for uh, stabilization, which means I can shoot slower shutter speeds. Uh, today again, you know, with the with with decent lighting that we have here, I think uh, it's fine. It being an XC lens, I still have to control my apertures through the command dial on this particular camera here. On the on the rear command dial, I can I can change the apertures. I'm just trying to shoot it wide open. Uh, one thing to note about this lens is that at at the, at the wide angle portion, the f number is uh, 4.5. Yeah. Uh, so it's not a very fast lens, but that's why it's it's affordable. At the full telephoto zoom side, it drops that down to 6.7. 6 so again, if I didn't have this lighting that that we're having, the sun's kind of coming up now. Um, you know, it might be a little harder for me to get a, a steadier shot because I do try to do the inverse rule when shooting with telephoto lens, right? So. This in particular is uh, 230, right? Yeah. Um, and typically, you know, the equivalency to that, I'm trying to do my math really quickly here. So 250, it's, it's add one, 115, that's 345, 345 millimeters. Yeah. I probably need at least one, one four hundredth of a second of a shutter speed in order to get a steady shot. Yeah. I know the image stabilization is going to give me two stops uh, improvements, yeah. so it's going to help with uh, taking long telephoto shots like this. So as long as I'm getting shutter speeds showing on my camera above 1400, I think I'll be getting some really steady shots and you know, I don't have to think about the quality of the lens anymore. It's really just yep. the shakiness and, and that's been taken care of because of the faster shutter speeds. Yep. Of course, uh, you know, I have it on auto ISO too, so I can put a minimum shutter speed to that of 1400 today. To, and yeah. that way it always forces the, uh, the, the ISO to jump up automatically and that's a good tip. Yeah. If you want to just to shoot more automatic, you know, uh, and some that's not worry so much about settings and, and just get the shot. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is kind of fun. So let's just shoot some more. The ducks are getting a little bit closer. So um, nice colors. Very nice color on that duck right there. And, and as you can see, you know, uh, zooming in even close up, you know, I can get some really detailed shots of of the ducks. Yeah. So we shot with the fifty two thirty. Um, which is a good lens, yeah, uh, but good. now we have a slight upgrade, which uh, you have right now. Yeah, and this is the uh, XF 55 to 200 lens. Uh, this lens is an XF lens, so it does have, uh, of course, a little bit better built quality to it, but also uh, a built-in aperture ring. Yeah. Um, just like the earlier lens, it both has OIS, but this one has a little bit of a better OIS system. So again, you can shoot at slightly shows, slower shutter speeds or even handheld and get a little bit better sharpness when it comes to a steadier shot. It's yeah. obviously not going to stop motion subjects moving in the scene, but of course uh, it will be much nicer when, when shooting at the full telephoto, especially when you don't have a tripod or a monopod to use, uh, yeah. like the situation that we're shooting today, yes. which is pretty much handheld. So let's go out and uh, test this lens out and uh, see what uh, our thoughts on it, and uh, hopefully we have some good things to say. Let's go see it. So if I switched over to the uh, 55 to 200 XF lens, uh, it is an XF lens, so it has the aperture rings. Uh, it has my OIS on and off switch, so I'd have to go into the menu like the XC lens uh, that we shot earlier. It also has, because of the aperture ring, I can quickly switch it to an automatic or to manual. I'm just going to use manual right now. My settings haven't changed too much, so I'm going to see if I can uh, test out the lens. I'm still using the inverse rules uh, when it comes to zoom lenses, so this focal length uh, maximum is 200 millimeters, so it's equivalent to about 300. So I need at least a shutter speed of 1 300th of a second. Uh, the OIS on this uh, is a little bit better than the uh, XC lens. I believe it's a few more stops or higher than the uh, two and two and a half stops that the, uh, the XC lens was. But again, you can check the specifications on this lens to, uh, to get more accurate information. Um, so much things that we have to deal with here at Fuji with all the different products. Uh, it's sometimes hard to remember all the, uh, the more specific settings on the camera. Uh, I am ways uh, from where the ducks are right now, um, so I'm just going to just fire off a bunch of shots. I do really like the feel of this lens though, I mean, it is still very light like the XC lens, 
It does have a nice rubberized uh, uh, zoom area here. It's slightly larger than the XC lens, and that's because the aperture, uh, you know, at the, at the fastest, if you look at the front of the lens, goes to uh, 3.5. And uh, when fully zoomed out to the uh, zoomed out, it uh, is 4.8. So it's a little bit faster than the XC lens, which was originally um, 5, I think 5.6. So the colors here in Ottawa are beautiful. The uh, season's almost here for fall. The leaves are changing, as you can see right here. Maybe in about a week's time, everything's going to be very, very colorful. But uh, great wildlife still with this uh, particular, particular uh, little park. So I'm going to test it for myself, the 55-200. And right away, I can tell the... Uh, the lens is heavier, but this is caused by the better built quality. It's a metal lens. Bigger glass, faster, so I can get uh, faster shutter speeds too. And definitely good colors there. It's amazing, fast focus. The good thing too is the aperture ring on that, so it's easy access. And again, like Billy mentioned, the uh, OIS makes a good improvement on that. But yeah, I can tell, definitely good lens. A little less reach than the 230, but then again, you get more light, so that's good. So right now I'm on aperture priority, and uh, again, this is a fast lens, so I can get faster shutter speeds. Right now I have uh, one, 2500 so I can really freeze the action and that's beneficial of the uh, the faster lens the more light that gets in so Francis that was pretty fun shooting with the uh, 55 to 200 I thought it was a pretty decent lens uh, of course if you wanted to upgrade from this particular lens Francis I think you have one of our latest super telephoto lens I wouldn't say super telephoto but a a nice telephoto yeah, lens. Yeah, a good one. Uh, uh, this one goes to 200, so it's a 300 millimeter equivalent. This one's a big boy. He goes to 400. Yeah. And it's also weather sealed. So okay. um, if it's raining for wildlife, it's not right now. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it is weather sealed. Build quality is amazing. The reach you get is pretty incredible. And also... Yeah, I mean, at 600 millimeters, it comes to yes. the eyes. That's uh, uh, much, much closer. You can add these, so you That's get right. more range even. So you have a 1.4 and you have a two times. So you can get even closer. So we'll do test shots with this okay. again to show uh, the reach you can get. And, uh, so, these, those, so those teleconverters, uh, they work with this lens. I don't think they work with this particular lens. They don't with this here. one. So there is an advantage of going with this as you, you can extend that. Reach, you have more options. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so you have 1.4, you have know, two times. So yep. two times brings this to what? I guess 800 millimeters, 800 times 1.5 brings that to where we're at there. Like if, if I'm not mistaken. millimeters. Yes, like if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I'm not good at math. So that's going to be that's gonna be pretty <laughs> interesting to see. So uh, let's uh, try those out, right? Let's do that. It's okay. going to be fun. Yeah. So Francis, we played with the other two lenses. This is the last option. This is the super telephoto lens, the 100 to 400 XF lens. Yeah. It is uh, quite larger than the other one, so we <laughs> left them back in the car. We yeah. just brought them back out here. Uh, right away, you know, I do feel the weight on this, but it's giving me the reach. So yes. we're going to test this lens out and see uh, what we can achieve, how far, how close we can get with it. Yes. Um, the image stabilization I heard on this lens is uh, pretty good. Pretty good. So uh, handheld wise, you know, it, it can be pretty low shutter speeds, but of course, again, we're going to use, use the uh, the inverse rules and try to keep the shutter speeds very fast because yeah. we don't want to add any shake. Uh, to that the again, image. we have good light, so we, we should be good to, to have fast shutter speeds. All right, let's just uh, shoot around with this lens. Uh, I know it's not really the ideal lens for this particular camera here because it's a little bit smaller in, in size. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, this is uh, one of the, 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 the pro options. It is a red badge red zoom. Red badge zoom. Yeah. So uh, it is weather resistant and again, great for shooting in this situation. Yeah. And uh, we'll see what we can do. So let's just fly yeah. away and play around with it in real life. Forget yeah. about specifications now. And let's just try to get some wildlife in the shots. So I'm just shooting and I'm just going to set it right now to single shot mode. I'm changing the autofocus on mine just to a single point because I'm just 
trying to shoot some static uh, static uh, bird shots for now, but if I see something moving later on, yeah. I might switch it over to the zone focusing and uh, If we get, get more tracking. birds flying, a little continuous would be good. Yep. Track a little bit. I'm just gonna take some. So the great thing about this lens is that it does have a, a long zoom. Uh, the stabilization is great. On the side of this lens, you have an option for the OIS. You have options to, of course, change it from aperture to shutter priority. But that's also another feature with this lens because of such a long zoom range in the focus. You know, you can actually minimize the focus to be only from five meters yep. to infinity. So it's not looking for anything closer. closer. And that's a great thing because it's going to really speed up the, the focusing, especially when you know everything that you're shooting is definitely five meters uh, away from us, right? And, you know, if you're taking pictures of, I guess, bears or polar bears, you know, if you see they're not going to be that close. <laughs> if you see a bear that's five meters away, you're not getting focused. You might not want to be shooting at that point. You might be kind of heading the opposite yeah. direction <laughs> as soon as possible. So yeah, um, it's not going to be an issue here if you want to speed up focusing by just limiting limiting the uh, the focus distance uh, to from five meters to infinity. Uh, you got the hood on, so your lens looks a little bit larger, but it is the same lens. Uh, the hood is great for obviously reducing any flares uh, in, in it, and that's the reason for, for having a hood. Yep. I kind of like the flares, it makes my pictures look a little nicer, <laughs> so hopefully the sun comes out a little bit more, brings some color to uh, our shots. Um, you know, I'm still shooting Velvia because you know, I'm feeling that the, the lighting here is not the greatest, and it's really punching out a lot of the contrast to the scene and, and a lot of the colors. Um, and you know, even with this lens at 400 millimeters, the great thing about this is that, you know, for, especially for wildlife, that you can get closer, but sometimes you don't need to be closer, but you need to be further away from the subjects, uh, whether it's bears yeah. or, or anything that generally gets scared and flies away. Or for your you own know, safety. <laughs> for your own safety, <laughs> <laughs> which is a very good point, right? So, um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's one of the things of having this type of lens. Now, typically we do recommend having a monopod if possible. Uh, for the situation, yeah. just to keep it steady because of this extreme, extremely long range. Because really, we talk about the crop factors. We're going to about 600 millimeters, right? Yeah. And uh, it's really going to add shake. And it could if we shaky. don't have the light, we don't bump the eye so they get the faster shutter speeds, it's going to make it a lot difficult. Yeah. So, so Francis, um, you know, the reach on this lens is incredible. It goes uh, close to 400 millimeters. Uh, we, did, we said earlier that uh, this lens does have an option that the other two doesn't, and mm -hmm. that it works with teleconverters. Yeah. You got the 1.4 time teleconverter. I have the two time teleconverter. So it's really going to extend the reach of my, of my lens. Which is um, already good. Which is very good because again, <laughs> we're talking about APS-C size sensor, the crop factor Vector. being one and a half. This is already 600 millimeters. This two time converter, although it does drop two stops uh, to my you lens. Get to so it's a little bit slow. So you want to maybe bump the ISO to get faster shutter speeds. It's going to bring my lens to about 1200 millimeters. And on a, on a lens like this, where I can singly hand hold this <laughs> yeah. without having a large tripod. It's going to be incredible. It is amazing. Uh, you got the 1.4 times. You yeah. do the math on that. We'll attach I it can't. on. We'll start shooting with it. And uh, we'll show you how the uh, the quality of this is. And, and for sure, the autofocus doesn't really change with this teleconverter. Uh, it's well built. It's weather resistant as well. Yes. And uh, works perfectly uh, well with this 100 to 400 lens. And uh, same thing with your 1.4 lens. 1 .4, yeah. We'll see what the image quality loss is, if any at all. I think other than the stops, the focusing is still going to be uh, uh, spot on and very, very fast. And the great thing with mirrorless cams, of course, is that, you know, it focuses right onto the sensor. So we can get hopefully very, very sharp images to show you. So let's do that and take some let's shots with the uh, teleconverter. Yeah, let's do it. Ding! I'm good! I'm good! <laughs> there we go, Francis. We got the 100-400 with the teleconverters attached. Uh, didn't take us too long. Um, we're going to try to play with it and see... Uh, how it affects the autofocus, but and the for reach. me, and the reach, of course, for me, it's uh, it's standing at uh, you know 800, 800 times 1.5. Again, that's like 1,200 approximately millimeters. Yeah. Let's see how I uh, how I get focus here. So I don't really notice that much of a difference. No, me neither. Although my aperture is at like f11, so let me just Mine's see. At F8 when I, I'm at the yeah. very end. So again, again with the two times, I lose uh, I lose two stops. So looking at my lens right here, it's a 5.6. So two stops brings me basically to uh, F11. 
So I need to, uh, I'm, my camera right now based on lighting to allow me to shoot uh, at a shutter speed, um, you know, of the equivalence of this, so the inverse. I need a very fast shutter speed actually. Yeah. So I'm, not, I'm probably gonna end up shooting at pretty high ISO. The great thing on, on Fuji cams is the high ISO performance is, 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 is it's quite good. good. So um, I'm just gonna go into my camera uh, while you continue shooting. Yeah. I'm gonna change my uh, my auto ISO options and I'm just gonna max up my shutter speeds to a little bit higher, one five hundredth of a second. I think I'm not really doing the inverse fool, but you know, based on the image stabilization performance on this, um, I think it should be more than adequate for me to get a nice steady shot here. So it's very nice, uh, the, the stabi stabilization. Sorry for a little bit of stumbling here because it's quite cold <laughs> uh, out here and uh, we have no gloves, we're not prepared. I and guess another frozen. trick when it comes to photography, uh, beside equipment, is being prepared. Being prepared. Having batteries, having memory cards, and in weather like this, having a toque or some gloves to, uh, to keep warm. Otherwise, it makes it less enjoyable when it comes to, uh, to photography. Yeah, of course, you know, range. we're in Canada, we're Canadians right now, and... Uh, you know, Still we wrap cold. it. <laughs> it's cold, we're gonna wrap it. Yeah. You know, what can we say? So I like it, it's it's nice. Um, you know, I don't think I need generally need that type of reach, you know, I'm not going towards bears and, and grizzly <laughs> and things like that of, of, of danger. So I think even without the teleconverter I get nice reach. You um, get you get close enough to, to weight wise, yeah. you know, you you are carrying a little bit more, but again, like I'm holding this camera it's tiny one handed. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, really, it's not bad if you really need this reach. This is the extent of, of, of Fuji's zoom uh, right now at 400 millimeters in this particular lens. Yeah, you're it's holding it with that heavy. one of fingers. Uh, I wouldn't obviously recommend you do stuff <laughs> Don't like do that, that, of course, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I think uh, this is great. I think uh, we'll look at some of the images, we'll, we'll talk about the lens and, and uh, maybe do a little wrap up uh, yeah, on what we think about uh, all three lenses, what ones you should look at and uh, make a decision for yourself if you need to upgrade your, your kit lens uh, to get the reach, of course, yep. and uh, which kit lens to go with. Hey, Francis. Hey, Billy. How was uh, the shoot going? It was pretty good. Uh, did you get some good shots? I did. I got some Blue Jays. Uh, I got some shots of some birds I'm not 100% sure on. Okay. I thought, uh, you know, uh, the day was really good. Yeah. You know, the lenses worked very well. Let's uh, just sit down and maybe we can chat about them. Yeah, let's just go see, uh, share our thoughts. Okay. Let's do that. So Francis, we've been shooting uh, pretty much with uh, three different lenses today. Yeah. We started off with the XC uh, 50 to 230. Yeah. It was a great lens, uh, lightweight. Uh, lightweight. It right. is an XC lens, so there's, there's things that you're not, you're not going to get, like an aperture ring. It is that, an entry level lens. Yeah, and I think it's a good step forward. Uh, the build on it is, as well, of course, uh, you know, it being a little bit more plastic, but yes. the, it, it is still glass inside, yes. and that's very important. And, and I found that a lot of the images today uh, looked really good, to be honest with you. I thought it was a really lightweight option. Yeah. Uh, really, if you're if you're not shooting a lot of wildlife, but sometimes you want to go you want to do that, I think this is an actually a perfect lens to have, you know, uh, for your for your for your kit. Absolutely. You know, as a as a supplement to the original kit that came with the lens. Yeah. We went over to the next lens, the uh, 55. 55 200. Uh, I thought that was, uh, to be honest with you, the best bang for the bucks. Uh, yeah. The cost of the lens versus the value of it, uh, good quality. I think, was uh, was key. Yeah, good build quality, uh, brighter, faster lens. So yeah, like when, when we zoomed out with the 50 uh, to 230, uh, the, the aperture really did close yeah. down on us to something like what 6.7 6 or something. This you you get 4.8, which yeah. is brighter than the average 55 200. That's that's right. So I, I kind of like that the image stabilization also was a step up. I felt, uh, you know, the 230, the 50 to 230 did a good job. Mm -hmm. I thought the 55 200 offered a little bit better stabilization. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we looked, you saw some of those videos. We, you know, and, and we turned the OIS on and off and you can kind of see the difference between the two. And of course, looking at the videos, kind of how your photos kind of would be too, right? Yeah. Because the stabilization is kicking in. Uh, I felt the the overall value for your money piece was the 55 to 200. Though you do lose on the range a little bit, it's not as long as the 230 here, the 50 to 230. But you get more light. You get more light, so that's so. very important, especially in a day like today where it was overcast. Overcast. Yeah. And we, we talked we talked about the inverse fuel for 
for trying to keep uh, the, the shutter speeds very fast to mm -hmm. prevent, you know, camera shake. The freeze. Yeah. You know, you needed, uh, you know, either high ISO or a faster aperture in yeah. that sense, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, the last option, the heaviest option, I think, uh, was the 100 to 400 XF lens. This is a pro lens, uh, yeah. a red badge zoom. Yeah. So you got features like weather resistance on it. OIS, uh, it is, which is way better again. It, I think it's like four or five four stops or five of OIS. Stops. So uh, yeah. I really did notice that, especially at the long telephoto end. I, I think I did do a quick video on it, just yeah. to turn it on and off to see how OIS, you know, and one looked <laughs> like I was in a, it was in a, in a hurricane and the other was, uh, you know, not so much a hurricane, but steady enough. So yeah. the OIS was a, a big help for and it. And it's not just good to take shots. It's actually good to, to compose Way it stabilized that's still right. before, that's so right. that's good. For and that. I know some people have you know shot at one fifteenth of a second. <laughs> you know I know it's crazy on on this lens full zoomed and getting you know very steady shots. Yeah. So it's uh it's I think for 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 if you're really into uh, wildlife photography, definitely the one hundred the four hundred is the lens to it's invest in. Yeah. Better OIS system, weather resistant, especially paired with you know a, a weather resistant camera like an XT one T two or yep. even the Pro two. And also um, you get the option to get teleconverters. That's the 1. right. 1.4 and the two times, so you get even more reach. So, yeah, I, absolutely. If and you're I into think, that, I mean. <laughs> I think the expandability is, is definitely well worth it. Uh, having those two options uh, versus these two lenses that the teleconverters do not work for, so we can't go beyond it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you do need the reach, I think the 100-400 is your best bet to go with. I think all three lens did a great job. I thought focusing uh, was uh, pretty good for most parts. Yeah. Again, these are telephoto zoom lenses, so they're not going to be focusing as fast as, as you know, prime, prime lenses lens. or, or wider angle lenses. So, you know, we understand that. I think a lot of patience mm -hmm. when shooting wildlife is, is key to that. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, some of the shots we got today, we, we took some pictures of Blue Jays. Some pictures of squirrels. Uh, squirrels. <laughs> uh, we got some ducks. We got some maybe geese uh, flying in the in the air, yeah. and and you know hopefully we got some of these other small little cute birds that kind of came yeah. in our shots. Um, kind of reminds <laughs> me of actually uh, of uh, of uh, Cinderella. You know those little small little birds. It seemed yeah. like that. It was yeah. uh, very cute. I don't know if they were chickadees or not, but uh, maybe you guys can comment yeah, on it and let us birds. know what birds we were actually shooting. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's fair to say that. All of these lenses did a good job. Yes. So whether you get the, the pro ones or the entry level, we were still able to get the shot. I think so. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, if you, again, want to shoot wildlife, you know, you, you got to go beyond that kit lens because it doesn't have the reach. Yeah. And these, these zoom lens will get you that much closer. Mm -hmm. And again, going back really quickly, lightweight option, the, the least expensive option is the XC50 to 230. I thought it was a great lens. I think, you know, potentially I would bring that to my next uh, hike just to keep the weight down. Yeah. Uh, the right. 55, the 21, I think was the best bang for the bucks. Definitely. Gave you great value for your money, but gave you, you know, the built quality like the XF lenses with aperture yeah. rings, OIS and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And if you really need to go pro, you need to reach uh, the 100 to 400 is your, your option for that type of customer, whether you, you are in the, indeed shooting wildlife. And if you're shooting polar bears, and, and bears and, and wild animals for that sake, whether it's a safari, definitely you want to stay safe, be farthest, <laughs> away. furthest away as possible. And the XF100 gives you that, uh, teleconverter absolutely. options give you that extra reach as well. So definitely. hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, we did. We enjoyed the, the shooting, I think. Yeah, it was a good day. It was a little bit cold, but <laughs> lots of fun. Definitely. So, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, if you want to learn about this and other Fujifilm products, again, you know, you don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Fuji Guys. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, until next time, I'm Billy. And I'm Francis. And we're The Fuji Guys.